Welcome viewers uh, to another teleconferencing session. I am Dr. Kakoli Gogoi. Along with me is Professor Benita Desmukh and uh, Professor R. Bhaskar. Uh, we are from Discipline of Geology, School of Sciences. Today's topic of discussion is fossil fuel. And today's session will be beneficial for the learners of uh, BSCG uh, CBCS Geology course program, uh, course uh, that is uh, BGYCT133, Crystallography, Mineralogy and Economic Geology. And the elective course BGYET141, that is Ore Geology uh, and Industrial Minerals. So let us begin the session uh, with uh, uh, what do we know about this fossil fuels or uh, what are the fossil fuels? You see learners, uh, these fossils, uh, they are the natural fuels. Uh, they are like coal, petroleum, then uh, natural gas. So these are the natural fuels. Uh, they are uh, formed from the remains of uh, the uh, organisms uh, um, like plant or animal. So these fossil fuels, they consist primarily of uh, compounds called hydrocarbons. So what are hydrocarbons? Hydrocarbons, uh, they are made up of atoms uh, of carbon and hydrogen. And uh, these compounds, they contain energy. They are uh, originally obtained from the sunlight. Uh, by the plant and animals and that they lived millions and millions years ago. So after you see this hydrocarbons when they are burnt, they releases uh, energy uh, in the form of heat and light and that uh, we all uh, use. So these hydrocarbons or we can say uh, that these are very important. So uh, coming to the fossil fuels, uh, today we will be discussing about coal, petroleum and natural gas. So uh, if we start with coal, coal uh, this is the principal uh, fossil fuel uh, that is primary source of energy and power. And uh, this coal, uh, this is um, extremely, this is complex uh, um, heterogeneous material that is very difficult to characterize. And uh, you see, uh, this coal, as I have already told, that they are they have uh, they are made from different plant materials uh, that have undergone um, physical and uh, chemical changes. So, you see, coal. Uh, we can say that uh, coal uh, uh, is uh, uh, a rock. It's not a mineral. It's uh, it's rock and. Uh, these are found in sedimentary rock and the unit we can say that coal um, consists of materials. So coal is not homogeneous uh, or, uh, uh, or they are uh, inorganic and hence it is not a mineral. So it is a rock because it is the solid part of the earth's crust. So coming to the uh, constitution of coal. So uh, uh, this coal is composed of uh, various proportions of carbon, uh, oxygen, hydrogen with small amounts of uh, nitrogen and sulfur. So uh, coal is not a homogeneous substance uh, and so they, they are composed of several bands. So if we talk about the macroscopic unit, uh, that is uh, these coals, uh, they uh, are the vitrine, clearing, uh, durine and fusion. So if we talk about vitrine, vitrine they are the bright uh, coals, uh, they are jet black in color uh, and they uh, usually they are uh, found in very uh, thin bands and coming to clearing they are less brighter than the vitrine and they are found in variable thicknesses and the uh, durine they are the dull coal 
but uh, their thicknesses, uh, uh, they are uh, much thick in nature as compared to vitrain and clearain. And fusion, uh, they are the powder uh, form of coal or uh, they are found in patches and wedges. Uh, uh, and uh, these are the uh, four uh, macroscopic unit of coal. And if we talk about the microscopic unit of coal that, that are the masterals, uh, so uh, they are the three types, uh, the, uh, vitrinite, um, axinite or we say liptinite and inertinite. So, vitrinite is the most frequent and the very important masterial groups and they are found in uh, mostly in bituminous coals and they are the, um, the remains of the humic substances and the, uh, and the axinite, if we differentiate axinite from vitrinite, uh, axinite where uh, the hydrogen, hydrogen content is uh, more uh, than the vitrinite. So, they are the remains of uh, the hydrogen rich uh, plants. And uh, for inertinite, uh, inertinite they also have the, the property as that of the original vitrinite, but they are oxidized uh, before uh, collination. So these are regarding the uh, the constitution of coal. Uh, like uh, like constitution, I have already told that for the chemical composition, uh, coal consists of uh, carbon. Uh, oxygen, hydrogen with small amount of uh, nitrogen and sulfur. So, the, uh, we all know that, uh, so the major component is carbon, but uh, we also have some varying proportion of mineral matter. Uh, and coming to the analysis part, uh, you see uh, the proximate analysis. Uh, this is the very initial analysis uh, before, um, uh, uh, after the mining of coal. So, in this proximate analysis, the coal, uh, an amount of coal is heated in a, in different temperature uh, for different time period uh, to uh, get uh, the proper uh, uh, information regarding the moisture content, the volatile matter, the ash content, the fixed carbon. Uh, and the calorific value can be calculated from this uh, uh, moisture, volatile matter and the uh, ash and fixed carbon. And for ultimate analysis, that is the elemental composition, uh, which is the convenient uh, method uh, to um, know about the carbon content, the hydrogen content, uh, the nitrogen content and sulfur and oxygen content. So, uh, these are the uh, chemical com um, composition that I have spoke. Now, this coal, uh, how they are uh, transformed from vegetable matter. Uh, you see, uh, coal, uh, uh, this can uh, be a continuous process. The formation of coal can be a continuous process or uh, at one point of time, they can be um, arrested in uh, in a particular position uh, uh, to form a variety of um, uh, uh, coal or uh, um, as and when uh, it proceeds, it forms different types of coal. So this uh, formation, transformation of vegetable matter into coal, uh, there are uh, two types of stages. One is the peat forming stage, uh, which is known as the biochemical stage and the other one is the geochemical stage. In the first one, that is peat uh, forming uh, stage, uh, where uh, the uh, the peat, the original source of the peat, it forms from the humic substances, um, uh, and this process is known as uh, humification process, where uh, it is formed uh, uh, due to oxidation, uh, that is uh, in a reduced oxygen level, uh, and where. Uh, the um, ground water table and the pH of the peat and the peat temperature is reduced. And uh, in geochemical process, uh, where the vegetable matter is transformed from peat to various stages, uh, like from 
peat uh, to lignite, then lignite to bituminous, then to anthracite. Uh, this process is also called qualification process and we also tell uh, uh, say them as the rank of the coal. So, this is regarding how uh, the coal is, uh, uh, vegetable matter is transformed from peat to anthracite. Uh, now, for detailing regarding the rank of the coal, I will request Professor Desmukh sir uh, to kindly elaborate on how this uh, uh, coal is classified or how these ranks uh, are, uh, coal is divided. Thank you. So, as you uh, discussed in the last slide, uh, regarding the process of transformation of the plant material into coal. So, when uh, this process of transformation of the plant material into the coal takes place, the process may, may get complete or it may be arrested at, uh, at any stage. So, this gives rise to coals of varying maturity. So, this is what we discussed that uh, the coals of varying maturity are the are called as the rank of coal and they are determined by the percentage of carbon, hydrogen, volatile matter and the moisture content. So based on the, uh, the order of progressive maturity, uh, there are four types or ranks of the, the coal uh, as discussed by madam. Those are the peat, lignite, bituminous and anthracite and there is a gradual increase in the carbon content and decrease in the volatiles, oxygen, hydrogen and water in this four different types. Now uh, coming to the first uh, stage that is peat. So uh, this is the uh, first stage and uh, it is the substance that all coal is formed from. It is the partial decomposition of the brownish black plant remains and uh, uh, the sources of uh, the peat uh, in India are in uh, Nilgiri Hills, in Tamil Nadu and in some parts of Sundarbans, West Bengal. And if we talk about the uses of uh, peat, they are uh, since low value fuel, they are generally used as domestic fuel, gas purifier, soil treatment material, etc. Then the next stage in the formation of coal is from peat is uh, lignite. Uh, so uh, lignite is the first type of coal that is formed from the peat uh, and there are layers of sediment cover peat uh, interpolating the oxygen and uh, stopping the decomposition. So this creates pressure and that squeezes out the water in gas and turning the, that into a denser and the brown lignite. Uh, uh, in India, uh, this uh, lignites are form, found in, uh, in some parts of Navelli in Tamil Nadu and in Palana area in uh, Raj uh, Rajasthan. And uh, this is also known as the brown coal and they are being used as a domestic fuel and also in the industry for uh, distillation and for gasification. Now coming to the third uh, one that is bituminous. Uh, so, this is uh, also known as a common coal and is an important variety of commercial coals. So, uh, when there is an added pressure of the more deposited sediments that further compresses the lignite to form uh, the bituminous coal uh, or it is also known as soft coal and it is one of the most abundant uh, type. Uh, in India, it is found in Rani Ganj and Jharia coal fields uh, and uh, the uses are they are generally used in the manufacture of metallurgical coke. Uh, the next is uh, the subbituminous. Uh, so this falls between the lignite and bituminous coal and it is also known as the black lignite and it is dark brown to black uh, in, in color. And the last stage is the uh, anthracite. The last one is anthracite. Uh, it is a coal of highest rank in which organic source uh, has been completely transformed into carbonaceous substance. Uh, it is a jet black in color and compact in uh, structure and uh, uh, it is uh, very rare uh, and uh, found in uh, Jammu and in parts of Jammu and Kashmir. 
Uh, okay, sir, you have talked about uh, the rank of the coal. Uh, now, for the proceeding, if we can uh, discuss uh, regarding the origin of uh, the coal and the distribution. So, I request Vaska, sir, to kindly uh, deliberate on the origin and the distribution of coal. Okay. Uh, coal is formed uh, in swampy conditions. Because of uh, swamp lying conditions, it can be freshwater swamp or uh, salt water. What is done is there is rapid burial of plants because it is uh, submerged under water, oxygen is deficient and the uh, slight decomposition takes place. And what happens over a period of time, the sediments get deposited layer by layer and this results in the transformation of peat to other forms like lignite and uh, bituminous and eventually anthracite. So this is the way the coal is formed. In fact, this is the way the, it has escaped the carbon cycle. Now the second uh, important thing to consider in origin of uh, coal is that there are two different theories. One is in situ theory and other is the drift theory. Both are different. In case of in situ, that means the burial took place in the same uh, place and uh, the coal formation also took place in the same place. In the alactonus or drift theory, the, uh, bu uh, the, co uh, uh, the burial does not take place in the same place, rather due to water or other forces, they are transported and they are deposited and over a period of time, they uh, accumulate and similar to the uh, in situ one, the same process occurs in coal formation. Majority of the coals formed in India are of this category, the drift one. Now, if you see the distribution, during the geological period, Carboniferous to Permian, we had the coal and Cretaceous to Upper Pliocene times, we had the coal. And why these coals formed in this period? We have to think uh, in terms of the geological conditions. At that time, the uh, oxygen content was maximum and there was a lot of green uh, plants and uh, these were uh, uh, dense. And that is why 90% of the coal what we get is from the Carboniferous period. Now, in India, we are classifying the coal based on the time period of occurrence. We have two categories. One is the Gondwana coals and other is the tertiary coals. Now, if you see the distribution of Gondwana coals in the map, they are Jaria, Bakaro and Rajmal coal fields of Jharkhand, Ranikanj coal fields of West Bengal, Singravali coal field of Madhya Pradesh and Talcher coal field of Odisha. And similarly, if you see the distribution of uh, tertiary coals in the map, you can see it is mostly the northeastern states and Jammu and Kashmir. We have Assam, Meghalaya, Nagaland, Nagaland, Arunachal Pradesh, West Bengal and uh, Jammu and Kashmir. So these are also important. The lignite distribution is also important. And these deposits main is in Neveli, Tamil Nadu, but there are also places like Pondicherry, Kerala, Gujarat, Rajasthan, Jammu and Kashmir, as you see in the map, where small amounts of these lignite deposits are reported. Okay. Coal and coal products are also highly useful. You can use them for a number of activities where energy is required, like electricity, textiles, explosives, drugs, etc. Whatever uh, requires energy, these are used. Okay, sir. Uh, viewers, now uh, uh, you have uh, known about the coal, uh, the coal origin, uh, the coal occurrences, distribution, and uh, also, sir, have discussed about the products. Now, let us proceed uh, to know about petroleum. May I request uh, Desmukh, sir, to kindly uh, proceed with how petroleum, uh, what is petroleum or how uh, it's been formed? Yeah, thank you. Uh, so, petroleum uh, is like another uh, source of energy like uh, uh, coal. Uh, so, petroleum and natural gas, they uh, are, uh, basically the petroleum is known as a liquid coal. Uh, so, these are basically mixture of uh, the hydrocarbons and the petroleum, uh, also known as rock oil, it comprises uh, uh, liquid hydrocarbons and, uh, uh, as, and the natural gas comprises gaseous hydrocarbons, the primarily of methane and also as ethane, butane, propane, and uh, in the inorganic gases, there are uh, nitrogen, hydrogen sulfide, carbon dioxide, and uh, helium. And uh, there are uh, different states of petroleum, although we are generally aware of the sol uh, this liquid state of petroleum. Uh, among the solid, uh, uh, these examples are the tar sands, natural asphalt, gypsonite, 
albertite, uh, gramite, oil sands and oil seas, uh, and the liquid petroleum, the conventional light crude oil and the heavy crude oil, uh, then the gaseous hydrocarbons are like we know conventional natural gas, unconventional uh, like methane hydrate, swam gas, colbert methane, shale gas, etc. Now, uh, crude oil uh, is different and what we see uh, the finish is the finished product like kerosene, uh, petrol, diesel. So, crude oil is, is in different form and that is refined and distilled to fractionate the several petroleum uh, uh, products like petrol, diesel, kerosene, propane, butane and etc. So, coming to the chemical composition of uh, the petroleum, it comprises basically the hydrocarbon compounds with a, which has a few impurities like nitrogen, oxygen and uh, sulfur and uh, the methane gas uh, is the dominant uh, uh, petroleum gas, uh, uh, a lighter paraffin hydro, uh, hydrocarbon and it contains uh, heavy uh, hydrocarbons and bitumen uh, uh, named as asphalt, tar, pitch, albertite, kisonite or grahamite depending upon uh, their properties. Uh, okay, viewers, uh, so sir have uh, uh, well said about petroleum and he have differentiated petroleum with the uh, crude oil and also the chemical composition. Further proceeding, uh, let me discuss about the origin of petroleum, how petroleum originates. Uh, you see, uh, petroleum and natural gas, they originate from the organic material they, that are buried in marine muds and the, the reaction of the carbides within the art uh, to form acetylene and subsequently this acetylene uh, they uh, produce natural hydrocarbons uh, and this uh, hydrocarbons that are the organic materials uh, that are buried in marine sediments they undergo uh, chemical changes uh, which is due to uh, uh, very high uh, pressure and uh, temperature uh, that are generated by the overlying uh, beds or the overlying sediments to produce this natural hydrocarbons. So, hydrocarbons they are subsequently uh, they moved into the porous sedimentary rocks or the reservoir rocks. So, uh, what are this pro uh, porous sedimentary rocks or reservoir rock? That is the uh, reservoir rock that is the storehouse of the oil uh, that, uh, that can be the sandstone, uh, uh, dolomite uh, or uh, the sands and the uh, you see further these hydrocarbons they accumulate to form the oil pool and uh, the, as I told uh, the reservoir that is the source rock of petroleum uh, they are the fine grained muddy sediments or they are called as mar. So, uh, this organic matter uh, they are derived from the alteration of the algae, the bacteria or the plant debris um, and, uh, uh, and for their the oxygen free decomposition or the con uh, conversion uh, uh, into uh, petroleum. Uh, and uh, you see to store the oil, uh, the reservoir have uh, a, uh, uh, they have characteristics like a good reservoir uh, rock must have good porosity and permeability. So, what do you mean by porosity and permeability? Porosity is the empty space between the grains of the rock uh, and permeability is the connectivity of this pores. So, as you can see in this uh, photographs, the first one uh, is non-porous and non-permeable uh, and the middle one is porous but non-permeable and the third one is, uh, this is porous and permeable. So, for a good reservoir rock, uh, it should have a good porosity and permeability. Yeah, likewise, you see the common reservoirs are the sandstone, limestone and shale and there are also rare reservoirs uh, like the fractured volcanic uh, or the igneous rocks which are not so common. Also in the world 40% of the oil is found in carbonate reservoirs and 5% in uh, igneous rock uh, which are not so common. Uh, uh, so coming to migration and accumulation you see petroleum it migrates. So petroleum 
pool they exist within an environment of water so for migration the environment should be water that is free uh, interstitial or edge and the bottom water so the movement of water this is intimately related with hydrogeo hydrology then fluid pressure and water movement there are also two types of migration the primary migration and secondary migration here in this figure you can see 1 2 3 4 and 5 one is the source uh, of uh, the uh, oil where uh, you see uh, this petroleum generation this is the source uh, source rock the second and third uh, this is the secondary migration of petroleum uh, and here this is the accumulation of petroleum this is uh, where the reservoir traps this accumulation occurs when the petroleum uh, when it migrates and it reaches a position where uh, it don't have or in um, uh, sufficient energy to move forward here here the oil accumulates and this is the seepage and uh, and from the earth crust we can also uh, um, drill uh, the oil so uh, uh, this is regarding uh, the there is also oil traps uh, like structural traps and uh, stratigraphic uh, traps structural trap is rela related to the structures of the earth like fold and faulting and stratigraphic trap uh, this is related to the lateral uh, variation or lithology so viewers uh, today we have discussed about fossil fuels we have discussed about coal uh, its origin and distribution and occurrences and for petroleum we have discussed uh, about what is petroleum and its uh, migration and origin uh, uh, and we can discuss further about petroleum uh, its distribution and occurrences uh, in a different session thank you